The 40th anniversary of the eruption of Mount St. Helens is on Monday. But years after the eruption, work needs to be done to protect towns from catastrophic flooding if Spirit Lake at the foot of a volcano ever gives way in an earthquake. Our Dan Tilkin looks at how conditions have changed at Spirit Lake and why two proposed projects are so critical and difficult. Before the 1980 eruption, Spirit Lake was well known as a summer destination for swimming, camping, and boating, with the symmetrical mountain looming in the background. The lake was also famous for its lodge and the defiance of the owner in the face of the eruption, Harry Truman. I had some people yesterday ask me why the hell I stay there and what I'm doing up there. That's my life. Spirit Lake and Mount St. Helens is my life. Forty years after the eruption, life and the environment on the thousands of acres around St. Helens still resemble a moonscape. The National Volcanic Monument has been left to nature, mostly. But now, Spirit Lake needs attention because scientists know of a danger they didn't know about in the 1980s, the threat of a massive magnitude 9 earthquake predicted for the west coast and what it would do to the southwestern shore of the lake, which was formed by the eruption and massive landslide. Spirit Lake is a, is a four plus square mile lake, you know, billions of gallons of water. And so if, if we're, there were to be a failure of debris blockage, much similar to the 1980 eruption. You would have a flood down through the small communities all the way down to the larger communities of Longview, Kelso. Interstate 5 as well as Columbia River shipping would be impacted. Chris Streberg is the Forest Service project manager for the agency's plan to drill deep into the landslide debris blockage. Scientists want to test the shore at its low point, which you can see here at the left of your screen, to learn how strong it is. When the mountain erupted, basically it, it dropped a landslide of rock debris into the valley. And on top of that is the pyroclastic flow, which is highly erodible. And on top of that is an ash layer, kind of like a layer cake. So the lake is held back by that rock slide debris. The eruption landslide also blocked the flow of water out of Spirit Lake to the Toodle River. The Army Corps of Engineers built this tunnel 35 years ago to keep water at a safe level. Four years ago, we were there when crews traveled a mile inside to remove this rock blockage. Now the tunnel needs more attention. Behind this lakeside inlet, blocked from view inside the tunnel, is a gate that regulates how much water goes in. You cannot have just open flow going into the tunnel because it, it would pressurize and start would uh, basically collapse the tunnel. The plan now is to replace the old gate and put in a second one for the safety of crews who have to work inside. But to do the projects, crews need to be able to bring in barges and drilling equipment. The plan is to recreate this road to the lake that was plowed through ash shortly after the eruption. Now you can see nature has mostly reclaimed it so that the road is only a trail, a Truman Trail. This map shows the new road would take construction crews from the south to the north to get to the western shore of the lake. The plan was devised with the goal of disturbing this unique environment as little as possible, while still protecting people downstream from flooding. At, at all costs, we have to keep that from ever happening again. Like 40 years ago. Dan Tilkin, Coin 6 News. And a little more information, the lake is kept 30 to 35 feet below its banks to reduce the risk of a catastrophe. The deadline for people to weigh in on this new plan is May 22nd. We have a link at coin.com for how to do that and who is eligible. If approved, the Forest Service and Army Corps of Engineers will do that work over the next few summers.